The Girl Who Played With Fire. Swedish original, new review. It's been a couple of years since the end of The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo, and Lisbeth Salander has kind of dropped off the map. She hasn't been in touch with anyone for over a year. She does get back in touch, so to speak, with the legal guardian from the first film. And soon after, he and others start turning up dead, and things really point to Salander, but Blomqvist is quite certain that it's not her, and goes about trying to, you know, discover the actual culprit. The theme of you know, men who hate women and that whole thing, and men of authority abusing their authority, particularly to hurt women, is continued this time with this idea of a ring of human trafficking of Eastern European women. And, you know, there's even a line of, you know, a prostitute is just a prostitute, you know, that the, the police don't pay that much attention to that. And there are these reporters working with Blomqvist, for Blomqvist, who are trying to expose this, you know, human trafficking organization. The plot is really not as strong as the first one, and I don't know, for, for a while it feels like it's going to be very much the same thing. There's, you know, when the people start dying, some of the victims are very clearly connected to the, you know, the human trafficking, and it seems like, okay, quite clearly, you know, it's one of the people connected to the human trafficking, it's one of the people behind it, or one of the people who have a lot to lose if the article about the human trafficking actually comes out. But then, you know, similar to how in the first movie, the Wagner concern is, you know, the culprit was most likely one of the Wagners, because they stood, they, they had the most to gain from, you know, killing Harriet. But it turns, it, it goes in a different direction. By the end, it didn't feel like all the plot threads were really all that resolved, and... I don't know... It wasn't as compelling as the first one. It is a pretty tense film, and it's still quite gritty, although both the, both of those aspects do lose some in just, I don't know, sometimes it tries too hard. There's this henchman, I don't call him Blondie, because he has blonde hair, and he also has what I believe is referred to as a bowl cut, and it severely impacts his badassness. And I do mean that very... It is very clear that this guy's there to be badass, which also makes it really strange that they put him in a sweater in at least one scene. He is clearly there for it to be, you know... And... Yeah, it just doesn't fit in this kind of film, you know. In the first one, scenes of violence, you know, physical fights are very realistic, very credible. It's, you know, it goes back and forth over who has the upper hand in the fight, and, you know, it really felt... You, you could imagine yourself in that situation, but in this one, Blondie is like impervious, you know, the, the, when we first spotted him, and 
and, you know, saw the whole, you know, oh, he's, you know, you, you can't hurt him kind of thing. My girlfriend made, you know, she said he reminded her of the Russian, you know, from the 2004 Punisher movie. And I have to agree. And that really just doesn't fit for this kind of movie. The mystery is decent enough. It's, you know, you... You do want to know what, you know, what's really going on. The acting is still quite strong. The characters are a bit less interesting and memorable. One character seems to be introduced specifically in order to prove that Blondie is indeed a badass and that he can really fight. You know, we have this boxer and he's... yeah, he's a boxer and he fights Blondie and that's kind of it. You know, my girlfriend read the book and she said that she really didn't get that into his character and I have a feeling that that to me, that points to the idea that he was initially created in order to make Blondie look like more of a badass. And again, yeah, I could be wrong, but that's what it seems like to me. The music is still really good. The film is a bit shorter than the first one. This is only two hours, or at least the version I watched was, and I don't, I don't think that it's a cut down version or anything. Yeah, that pretty well covers it. I've reviewed other parts of the series. The links are in the description box. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.